which ruled a high percentage of the inhabitable planetoids in the Orion sector in a reign of terror. Uh, because after they had become rather addicted to this gold powder, this mana ormi spice, what onset was a condition where there was only one source of the fire. It was mechanical. And they became more and more interested in the, uh, what's the TV show, the Calypso? Techno. Te the techno, the techno Calypse, right. Uh, that was the TV show that says, you too can become a Borg. It is a privilege to be assimilated. Just insert a chip in your body and you can become like everyone else. Uh, biology is getting behind and machines are getting ahead. Well, that's precisely the sentiment which started the Orion Wars, referred to in Star Trek as the Empire Strikes Back. The Empire Strikes Back, which was essentially a story of those who were in a hive mind, total telepathy culture, which was almost entirely machine-based with little pieces of biology glued in here and there to make it fun, versus a culture of the remnant humanoids who still used some passion and bliss. And they were in part descended from what were called the dog-bird brain, the Dogon, the Wialawa, the bird tribe, the Ophanim versus the Seraphim. So in the Empire Strikes Back kind of story, the situation is essentially between those who have fallen into this hive mind. The reason they fell into hive mind was because when there's only one source of fire, it phase embeds everyone and you have total telepathy. The problem with total telepathy is that you no longer can imagine yourself separate. So no one gets to experience the agony of separateness. And as a result, no one learns anew the skill to turn inside out and feel outside as if it were inside, we call compassion. So with the end of the birth of, the, of new compassion was the end of the birth of new individuation, which was the beginning of total telepathy and hive mind. The hive mind uses only hexagonal structures which are membrane making and incubating. Whereas the bliss passion group uses pentagonal structures, which the church says the pent is bad and yet says repent and be saved. We know that penting is simply the process of the golden ratio becoming self-embedding. It's the square root of five is how you derive the golden ratio. So it's in five-ness is in phi-net. So this, this would be an image of that idea of repent and be saved to embed is to have compassion. And you see how this onset of recursion creates this principle embedding, which is this principle of charge density. Let's look further here at this summary of these principles on the same page, okay? So we're, this is just another summary before we go on with our story. We've said the hard EKG voltage learns bliss, the result of perfect compassion which is compression without pain, non-destructive compression. We, we say that perfect implosion equals inner fire, which is the same as fire. To be self-similar fractal is to feel inside the same as what is felt outside. So to be able to self-refer, and remember the golden spiral is the only angle at which a wave can re-enter itself non-destructively. To be able to self-refer, able to refer to yourself, is to be able to self-embed, is to be able to be self-aware. Again, fractality equals embeddability equals non-destructive compressibility equals turning inside out ness equals scale invariance to be able to be compressed. The scale changes, the, the ratio remains the same while a scale changes. Ratio is profane, scale is sacred. I'm sorry, scale is profane, ratio is sacred. So scale invariance equals spin density, equals information density, equals charge density, equals sustainability, equals shareability. And you see here in this, this actually became a course on managing chaos for business people. This equals market ability. It's literally the ability to create the perfectly distributable wave function optimized by this golden spiral ratio called phi low taxis, perfect branching, is actually a deep and profound principle for how 
marketing how business should happen. It's, it's like in the Primer on Rotation and a Primer on Energy book series by Christ and Einstein. They said that there would be no shortage of energy and any resource if we didn't try to sh store if we only distributed. But to have perfect distribution with no phase delay, no latency, uh, I call to mind for a second the pictures of what they call internet storms. You know, you have a picture in the sky and it's a storm, all these clouds going around. You say, oh, if you really understood long waves of electrical pressure, you'd understand that they were literally collective emotion. And then you look at these pictures of where there are traffic jams in the global World Wide Web and they call them internet storms. And they are quite literally uh, traffic jams or waves of collective emotion, right? Well, the way you can best get your packet through the, the, this World Wide Web is to make a map of latency. I credit this idea to my friend Tom Belial, where he explains that if you're sending a packet around the web and you simply make a map of where the packets get slowed down, eventually you can make a map of where latency, that is delay, or what, the only thing that slows down the web is attempt to store. If there was no attempt to store, you'd have infinite conductivity, which would be perfect distribution. I give you another example. This is the from the Buckminster Fuller book, uh, Nine Chains to the Moon. If you had billiard balls in a row between here and the moon, if there was uh, one millimeter between each billiard ball and you hit the one ball at this end, it might take a year for the ball at the other end to pop off. But if the billiard balls from here to the moon were all touching each other and you hit the billiard ball at this end, the billiard ball at the other end at the moon would pop off instantly faster than the speed of light. So the only thing that interferes with the possibility of infinite or infinite wave distribution share ability is literally phase delay. Phase delay goes to zero when compression is perfect and so you have this perfect instant faster than the speed of light distribution network which is how e pluribus becomes unum, how waves become self-organizing, how ability to respond is the result of many waves an infinite number of waves can come to one point, infinite. And so you're able to respond to all those waves at once. And that's the moment at which the eyeball at the head of the worm that is your genes appears to begin to choose how to steer itself. It's literally a, a donut that's squeezing itself inside out, but it's a long tube, so it looks like a serpent. I mean, people, if you see what digestion is, are really just a long tube. And digestion is where you squirt through the middle. Well. That's essentially how magnetic fields learn to digest starlights. And when the implosion geometry is right, the front end of the worm gets an eyeball. That's called, uh, well, there are many poetries for that, but one is the, called the Lazarus Effect. Uh, Lays are us in the book, in the Dune series. Another is called uh, Quetzalcoatl Returns, the many plumed one, which is, that's how the serpent comes to feed the eagle. See. The amygdala is literally the mouth of the reptilian brain stem. Amygdala is the name for the journal on fractals. Its shape is the almond shape of exactly where two golden spirals cross. And the almond shaped uh, 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 is the, then the, how you get sweetness squeezed in the amygdala of the brain dripping onto the base of the tongue in the sort of plumbing 101 hydrodynamics of bliss juice pumping. And then this mouth of the reptilian brainstem amygdala, the, the nut shape of the fractal, uh, in fact, uh, magdala, amygdala means to tower. Uh, uh, mag is uh, the Orion queen. The, 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 the Magdalene was the leading edge of this bloodline in the dynastic union of Jesus and Magda in the Grail bloodline. So here is the Mag deciding if it's going to take its bliss juice and pump it out the mouth of the serpent into the bird brain. And that's how the serpent feeds the eagle and Quetzalcoatl returns. And that's kind of the story of bliss.